Okay, so I'm going to take you through the gun. We're going to break it entirely down. What I want to do is take you through a few of the areas of the gun that people tend to overlook. If your gun is triggering slowly or if it's not triggering at all, there's ports that people tend to miss and I'm going to highlight those for you today. So I want to separate the fluid section, the front section of this gun from the air section or the back handle portion of this gun. Making sure everything's flush clean. What we want to do is make sure that the A components, this one's labeled A and you can see this one is A naught or B. We want to make sure that we keep those components separate and the containers when we go to clean them, we don't want to be mixing the A and the B components. So this is the inlet screen and check valve assembly. So we have the standard 80 mesh screen, the sealing O-ring, and you can notice the check ball in there. We're gonna take this apart. There's a small stem, a spring, and then the check ball assembly. The A is exactly the same as the B. The only difference is we label it so that you don't mix the two uh, to get a reaction down the line. So I want to remove the side seal retainer and air cap assembly. Using a small screwdriver, we just want to lift away the side seals a little bit so that we can extract the mix chamber without knocking the side seal insert. So again, you can see we have the A side seal and cartridge assembly, and then also the B. So this is the side seal cartridge. You can see the sealing O-ring. The spring to help provide the mechanical seal against the mix chamber. This is a mechanical seal on the smooth surface of the mix chamber and the smooth surface of the side seal. We want to make sure that we don't have any mars or anything that I could catch with a fingernail. If I do, that should be replaced so we don't cross over the gun. Using a pick, we can just extract the O-rings. You notice our O-rings, they'll have a dot on there. These are a solvent resistant O-ring that it can be wiped off or cleaned with solvent. We don't really want to soak those for hours on end or they will still, still swell. It's far less susceptible to the high temperatures and the chemicals that we're processing with this gun. So we have the three O-rings. Okay, so then there's the air seal O-ring for the head. Pull that O-ring off. That seals the air for the purge air in the internal chamber. And then we also have the front seal O-ring you can see that that size for the air cap to seal the air there, and this one's actually sealed on this smooth bore of the gun handle. So that's what traps the air in the, the fluid head section for doing all the air purge. Okay, so we're gonna remove our needle valve assembly for the clean off air. I'll talk about adjusting that when we get to reassembling the gun. You notice just the tapered needle valve that controls the air that blows through these small holes and across the cap and it just kind of keeps a material from adhering to that air cap assembly. It's not really a pattern air. We don't use it to adjust our pattern. There's an O-ring here. You can see the small O-ring and it's just an air sealing O-ring. All the O-rings in the Air Purge Fusion gun are of the same solvent resistant. We don't use cheaper O-rings into the air section because if you cross over there, you can probably save the O-ring. So I have a small retaining ring here that holds this retaining nut. You can see the little catch area here. And this is a split ring, so we just want to kind of walk it off. We want to be mindful of that O-ring groove that we don't mar or damage and affect our air seal when we're gonna put that back together. So you can see it's just a split ring. It has the little ears here that you grab and then you just lock it off and then that ring will come off. 
we want to make sure that we get uh, all the o-ring grooves and the threads clean when we go to put this thing back together. We can remove the cap for the zerk. And if we have to, uh, we can remove the zerk and we can also clean that out if we've had a major crossover. We've designed this gun so all the ports can be drilled straight on. There's no cross port screws or set screws that have to be removed. Every port comes through. You can see the drill bit to go from the inlet check valves and screens to the side seals. Same thing with the other side. So we want to make sure all those passageways are clean. This is for the clean off air. It comes through here. You can see the drill bit where that needle valve assembly was at. And then we want to make sure that nothing came in there. The threaded insert, we want to make sure those threads stay clean so we don't damage the thread when we put the mix manifold on and off. So that's pretty much the fluid side section of this gun. We're going to go through the handle assembly. This is the piston that makes the mix chamber go back and forth. We have the, the rear cap and safety stop assembly. That just prevents this piston from going backwards and engaging the gun. You can see there's the two O-rings on the piston. The air inlet, the spring for the trigger. You can see on the front handle of the gun, I have a notch that we can use that. I'm just gonna get it started. Use the small screwdriver that comes with the gun and we can extract the air valve spool. We wanna be careful that we don't mar the surfaces there. And you can see I have the three O-rings on this particular gun model that direct the air to open or close the gun. This is the muffler. This is one of the areas if this muffler gets restricted, can cause your gun to either not trigger or to be real sluggish in the trigger. So we wanna make sure that we get that out. You notice there's a little screen here. That screen gets covered with the rust and dust in an air supply or from crossover. And we wanna make sure that stays clean. We can just soak that and then blow it off with a little compressed air um, to make sure that's clean. The other thing about this gun, if we wanna change the position of the handle, we can actually move the air inlet to this port. Okay, so we're gonna get a quarter inch a hex key Allen wrench and remove this port. This is the port that can move to this part of the handle. This can move down to here. This is where we've changed the direction of the air limit to the gun. Okay, so the porting in here. Notice in the handle, we got a bunch of holes drilled in there. That's just to take some weight out of the handle. But you can see the we have really three ports. We offer a clean out tool kit. Uh, I always recommend people just go to look for this part number online. It does a really good job of showing you the passageways and the drill bit sizes. It gives you the right sizes for the porting so that you um, will not damage the handle. One thing that's kind of a, a critical concern, if you look at this note, these two angle drills they do not completely go through to the air passage. If you drill that out too aggressively and remove the metal, what will happen is you'll actually start clipping these O-rings and you'll chew on the O-rings and you'll get an air leak. So we wanna bring the drill bits in far enough. So in the kit, we offer the, a pulley drill. This happens to be a 1 8 inch. That's the majority of the passageways on this gun. Again, there's no cross porting. It's all straight through access. So you notice on this hole, this is one of the ones that come down at an angle. I kind of show you that. But notice it doesn't break through. So we want to be careful when we hand drill this hole out. Then there's this other one, which is also the same one. So the two angle drills, we want to make sure that we don't remove the metal. The one that everybody forgets about is this one that comes up through where we just removed. 
This one goes all the way through, but nobody ever thinks to drill this passageway out. So if your gun's not triggering and you've put it together a couple of times and you're at your wit's end, be mindful that this drill comes up from the bottom and we also bring it to the angle on the front. So the one on the front is here. So this one is actually the air that comes around and actually provides all the purge air. So we want to make sure that that's clean. If that's one indication maybe that this board is restricted is you're not getting any of your purge air. So we want to make sure that's clean down to the handle. But again, this port kind of hides the one passageway again. You can see we're just coming up through after we remove that plug. We're coming up through, so we need that pulley length drill bit, eighth inch diameter again, and we want to clean it all the way up to here. So this is the only hole that breaks through the air trigger assembly. So we want to make sure we're all the way through. You can actually kind of see in there that the drill bit's clear through. And that intersects then with this one. And we just want to make sure that's all clean. So that's pretty much the air section. The trigger can come off, the trigger guard if need be, to clean the, the port. But hopefully we don't get foam back into the spool. Again, if we're going to clean out the spool, we want to make sure that we use a nice soft brush in solvent, we don't want to be scratching the surface because then the O-rings won't seal anymore and we'll have uh, lots of problems with the way that gun will trigger.